What's going on, everyone? Happy Tuesday to everyone. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had taken a COVID test, hopefully you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long COVID issues. It is time now for the Tuesday edition of the Pandemic Update for Tuesday, July 2nd, 2024. If you're new to my channel, this is where we do the daily Pandemic Update on all things COVID and any other virus that could be a health threat to you. Let's face it, there are a lot of different viruses out there, and each of them carry a various set of risks, such as hospitalization, severe illness, sickness, even death. It still happens with the COVID virus. It happens with other viruses as well. Here, we try to inform you and keep you safe from these viruses by telling you the latest news and what's going on with the virus levels in your area. Usually it's the United States, but hey, sometimes if we find stuff from other places around the world, we do report on that as well. Want to stay informed with what's going on? Subscribe down below. It's the best way to stay safe. My updates are daily. I do them almost every day of the year. Very rare have, do I ever miss an update. So subscribe down below if you want to stay informed. If you like this, give it a thumbs up. It helps push the content throughout the algorithm of YouTube. Share these videos with anyone you know. And of course, leave a comment down below and hit that notification bell. That notification bell will tell you when I do my daily update. All right, starting off today on a good note. Yes, you heard me correctly. A good note. I haven't said that in a while, but today we have to start off by saying this. The U.S. will pay Moderna $176 million to develop an mRNA pandemic flu vaccine. This has to do with bird flu. And about time. It really is. We need to address the situation, and this is one step that the United States is taking to address the situation. Let's read a little bit of this. The U.S. government will pay the vaccine maker, Moderna, $176 million to accelerate development of a pandemic influenza vaccine that could be used to treat bird flu in people. As concern grows about cases in dairy cows across the country, federal officials announced Tuesday. Moderna already has a bird flu vaccine in very early stage testing that uses the same mRNA technology that allowed rapid development and rollout of vaccines to protect against COVID-19. The new funds from the U.S. Department of Health and Humane Services include continued development of vaccine, including a late stage trial next year if those early study results are positive. So some very good news that we may actually have in the works, a vaccine for bird flu for humans. Of course, obviously, the first people that would even be able to get this when the time comes is probably, if I had to guess, would be farmers, as they are the ones most at risk right now. But as we know, as this continues to spread and evolve, you know, farm workers, they have families that spreads to their families. Do they have kids? Well, kids go to school. You know, eventually the whole domino effect, if we don't do something, could happen and at least we're taking one step here with a potential mRNA pandemic flu vaccine. All right, moving on over to my website now. Remember lately, I've been telling you that I am compiling a list of all the 2024 uh, performers or bands, entertainers, whoever, who had to cancel shows because of being sick. Well, I've added to it yet again, and this time a recent one that just popped up today. Singer Pink will be canceling a show in Bern, Switzerland. So far, the cause is said to be doctor's orders after Pink fell ill. So again, singer Pink is now uh, falling ill. I promise I will get around to adding more of the past ones. Uh, I've just been very busy because I run another channel, and well, right now, we're talking about Hurricane Burl. We'll get to more details on that in just a moment. Now, in measles news, I do think we mentioned this before, but it is worth uh, mentioning this again. There has been a case of measles that traveled through Boston's Logan Airport. It's a busy time for travel right now with the 4th of July, and the person did go up to New Hampshire. Then I think believe they eventually came back, and... They went from Boston to Amsterdam, so yes, this is uh, something to be concerned about. I did tweet this out. You can read the full story from 
WWLP.com. That's a uh, news source up in Boston, I believe. And you can read all the times and potential exposures. Hey, if you travel through there, you may actually want to read this because it's relatively important. All right, some good news. Studies suggest regular vaccine boost may help people who are immunocompromised fight COVID-19. John Hopkins Medical Research finds booster doses of bivalent vaccines given every three to six months helps maintain a person's ability to neutralize multiple SARS-CoV-2 strains, including XBB 1.5. I know, XBB 1.5, that was a variant from oh so long ago, but hey, at least it does uh, help. All right, moving on to this now. We have to talk about Thailand. New hospitalizations for COVID in Thailand rocketed upwards last week to 3,256 new cases, hitting a new weekly high for all of 2023 and 2024. The Ministry of Public Health on Monday also reported 16 new COVID deaths for the past week. This is a fact from Friction Fiction on X, and they did put more. Thailand's new weekly COVID hospitalizations now are more than six times the weekly total of 501 from when the current spring COVID surge began in mid-March, now averaging 465 per day. Thailand's new weekly COVID hospitalizations have risen for 14 of the past 16 weeks. The latest weekly hospitalizations tally for June 23rd to 29 marked a week-over-week -week increase of almost 79% from the prior week's total of 1,823. The weekly gain of 1,433 new COVID hospitalizations, they're saying hospitalizations, not cases, new COVID hospitalizations is by far Thailand's largest week-over-week -week increase of the year. The latest tally of 16 weekly COVID deaths ties the weekly high for Thailand for 2024 among the new deaths. The MOPH said 7 were male and 9 were female by age, 10 were ages 70 and above, 2 each were in the ranges of 60 to 69, 50 to 59, and 20 to 49. Hey, 20 to 49, that's becoming a younger age, so yes, younger people still can die of COVID. All right, moving on, we will get an update from the UK tomorrow, so look for that. Let's take a look at the allergy map in the United States, and 60% of the country is in low to medium status. We see yellow and orange out in the west today, Yeah, more so in the Pacific Northwest. We do see some yellow in the northeast today, but it's nice weather. Enjoy the nice weather. Unfortunately, there's just a little bit of pollen. It's not terrible. The southeast is doing really well for pollen. And let's take a look at air qualities. We'll see what's going on around the United States. You and I are both looking at this for the first time today, so let's see what comes up. Okay, not too bad. Yeah, a little yellowish green in the northeast, but again, I'm not terribly concerned about that. Uh, the central region, from the Gulf Coast, like New Orleans, Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, on northward, on up into Oklahoma, Kansas, and Omaha, Nebraska. Yeah, a little bit of yellow for you, even Tennessee and Alabama as well. Some yellow, some few oranges mixed in, and the typical hot spots in California between wildfires and other things going on. California does see some coloring on the map today. Heat-related illnesses are really starting to increase in some places, especially in the Northeast. Look at New England. Northern New England is really starting to pick up the pace with heat-related illnesses. Today should be a good day for that because it's not hot up there right now. So we don't expect, I don't expect to see this continue into uh, next week. It may skip a week where it may be a week where it gets better there and then gets worse again because there will be a heat wave returning to the east, but northern New England won't be as bad. The rest of the country, it continues to rise with exceptions to portions of the upper Midwest, Minnesota and the great North Plains uh, up in North Dakota and South Dakota. It's not terrible yet. More so, South Dakota is definitely worse than North Dakota and California. It's really increasing. Same with the Four Corners region. Oregon, it's increasing as well. Taking a look at what's going on now with my other exit, where I have been tracking Hurricane Burrow, and Hurricane Burrow is still a major hurricane. It is set to hit Jamaica. It's still Category 5. At the time it hits Jamaica, it's expected to be either a strong 3 
or a low end category four at that point, which is ooh, that's going to be devastating. It's it's not going to be good. And then we have to keep all eyes on the Gulf Coast. Yes, portions of Mexico and or maybe even Texas. Want to learn about that? Check out Climate Data Report. And you can check out my other YouTube channel as well, which is also at Climate Data Report. All right, moving on now. Taking a look at what's happened in Philadelphia. On Monday, there were 786 EMS incidents. That is below 800 still close to 800 but hey we'll take some days below 800 well needed taking a look now at what's going on in the burbs of philadelphia you know the suburbs and whoa i'm not i'm not liking this not one not two not three not four not five but six cardiac emergencies in montgomery county pennsylvania right now wow that's not good plus there's a respiratory emergency and a few other things 13 calls total but again one two three four five six cardiac emergencies respiratory emergency stroke yikes that's not a good set of calls right now let's see what's going on in chester county and we do see there are a few things going on there as well continuing on now we have to refresh this let's take a look at the latest update from pennsylvania's wastewater today and see what's going on well we do see some good news we see a no wastewater site in Pennsylvania on their dashboard is seeing any large increase at this time. There are some places that are seeing no change, but we also do have a couple counties with increase. One of them being Center County, Pennsylvania in the State College area. That's where Penn State goes or is, and uh, they're in summer classes. That's much smaller population at Penn State right now than it would be in the fall winter or even spring semester and indiana county is also noting that there is a increase at this time but again nowhere showing a large increase in pennsylvania at this time that's some good news nationally at walgreens this week 36.5 percent positivity rate that's up by 2.5 percent let's take a look at what's going on now up in canada drum roll please i doubt this updated but we'll see maybe it did Okay, it did update. See, I think I believe they just had Canada Day. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. Isn't that a big holiday up there? Yeah, we have 4th of July. They have Canada Day. Pretty sure that's a relatively big and important holiday, but hey, they updated. Number of sites showing an increase. 18. Number of sites showing no change. 34. Number of sites showing a decrease. 8. One site is high, 12 is moderate, 10 is low, 37 new sites, and these are wastewater sites for COVID. All right, let's take a look at something that we were looking at yesterday. Let's take a look at some uh, weekly deaths. We want to see in some states what the percent of deaths is due to COVID. And we ended off yesterday with Illinois, which Illinois, that was dropping. It was down to half a percent. Let's continue on with a few other states. What's going on in Louisiana? Well, the most recent update from Louisiana, over 1.2% of all deaths right now in Louisiana are because of COVID. That most recently updated on April 13th. Let's go down to Kentucky. What is going on there? Kentucky at this time shows that 1.5% of all deaths right now are due to COVID. Let's continue to how about... New Jersey. I want to know what's going on with New Jersey. And New Jersey looks like it is 0.7% of all deaths right now are due to COVID. And let's just continue on here. We're going to do a couple more. How about Texas? Texas is a big jumbo size state. And we can see that it's starting to rise ever so slightly in Texas. 0.6% of all deaths in Texas are due to COVID. And here's another big one, an important one. Let's go to Florida. I don't recall. Did we do Florida yesterday? Wow, Florida is starting to actually really start to rise. It was 0.7. Now it's all the way up to 1.3. That's as of June 22nd. Remember, Florida is in a wave right now. So 1.3% of all deaths in Florida right now are due to COVID. Again, low number, but it is on the increase. And we'll just do one more at random somewhere. Let's see here. How about Rhode Island? Can we know? That's That data is pretty well chopped up let's go to west virginia can we look at west virginia no can't really do much for west virginia we'll take a look at mississippi if we can and i believe we can all right this is good enough in mississippi and updated on may 4th 1.5 percent of all deaths in your state right now are as a result of covid 19 so there you go hey 
By the way, first time we looked at anything for Mississippi in a while. We need to keep up. We need to keep up with more of these states that we don't look at all that often. All right, I want to take a look at wastewater scan. Let's see what's going on there. Still seeing this radical upward movement for COVID nationally, but you can see here the overall trajectory is upward. No, it's not going straight up. That will correct. But even when it does, it's still a steady climbing upward trend, and that's going to continue for the foreseeable future as this. Summer wave does continue. RSV is low at this time. Influenza A is low. Influenza B is low. HMPV low. Norovirus is still in the medium category. In the Midwest region, let's take a look there. You can see here, there has been an increase for COVID, a fairly consistent one. Little drop on the most recent update, but again, that's that erotical movement that will change. High levels in the Midwest, according to wastewater scan of COVID. RSV, influenza A, influenza B, all low at this time. HMPV is dropping, and norovirus is behaving as well. It's dropping. Taking a look now at what's going on in the Northeast, and in the Northeast region, we do note another erratical movement. Overall trend for COVID has been upward. Everything else is doing just fine at this time. Medium for norovirus, but that is dropping. In the South, this is where we have been seeing a much bigger rise. And even though there's an erratical movement, the upward trend in the South has really been going up. So if you know someone in the South, or someone who's traveling to the South, let them know. COVID is really running rampant in the southern states right now, as would be expected in the summer month. You know, air conditioning season, people run inside to stay cool. RSV, influenza A, influenza B, all behaving. Ever so slight increase on influenza A, but that looks to be an erratical movement. HMPV is dropping. Norovirus is medium and holding steady. We'll have to see what happens when that erratical movement updates. The West Coast at this time shows that COVID continues to go upward. It's been a steady climb. Again, there's the erratical movement. Ignoring that, overall trend is upward. RSV is low at this time. Influenza A has actually been rising ever so slightly. Still low, but slight rises for that influenza. Influenza B is flat at this time. HMPV, not much of an issue. Norovirus is medium at this time. All right, New Jersey for today. We do note that New Jersey is back to 236 hospitalizations with 70 out of 70 hospitals reporting. And nine people are on a ventilator at this time. In the ICU, 24 at this time. And discharges, 26 discharges. In New York State today, there have been 1,001 new cases of COVID. Taking a look at New York State hospitalizations, they did have a pretty uh, big rise today. It was 751 people hospitalized. Now it's up to 831. So again, a yeah, big rise. It's going to continue probably for several more weeks, if not maybe a few more months. Let me show you why. Because if we look at the past history with New York State, We'll just go back 20 months, say. And we can take a look back last year. We can see, last year, the wave, it did start about a month later. But look what happened. It did not peak all the way until October. And a part of the reason for that was back to school. So if this wave keeps running, eventually we are going to run into back to school. And we know what that means. Back to school, kids, you know, bunched together in classrooms, it does generate transmission. So again, 831 people in the hospital in New York State, and 77 people in the ICU. Alrighty, folks, that does it for the Tuesday edition of the Pandemic Update. We will have another Pandemic Update again tomorrow. If you like this update, give it a thumbs up, subscribe down below, share this with anyone you know. Of course, leave a comment down below, and don't forget to hit that notification bell. I will see you all again next time. Until I see you again next time, stay safe, everyone, and have a fantastic Tuesday afternoon. Thanks for watching.